Welcome to the Big Honker Podcast, brought to you by Steak Plain Meats. I'm Jeff Stanfield with the world famous Andy Shaver. That is me. Um, we've had a little bit of a buzzing noise, so hopefully that's taken care of right now. But I don't know these new microphones; they 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 they're kicking my butt. So you don't like the new ones? I do. It's just it it it, it uh, you know it's a learning curve, just like anything else. But we have learned. I sound. I have a much, uh, a much, you know, broadcast ready voice with an expensive microphone. Sitting here on our table today with Dad and um, the World Championship Goose Hunting Trophy or Calling Trophy. Yeah, I moved that, Jeff. I did not like the way you had that. I mean, I Ron, like Ron needs to be closer. You can't just. You can't see. You had Ron when he was the only thing here, and then we got the new Job, and you're just like, well, you'll just take that too. That's not fair. You, you, I get you, dad, you get Job, huh? Well, I moved it back. Jeff. I think if dad had his choice, he'd probably be rather baby by you, though. Oh, well, he was more partial to you at the end. There's no doubt about that. Well, did you see, you blame him? Did yeah, no, not really. Don't no. you never give him as much shit as I did. I miss dad. I was bitching about something the other day, and I thought, you know, I wish dad was here so I could bitch to him about this because he always enjoyed that, that side of things. And you know, you're jacking with the camera again. It's always something. I'm telling you, since we've went Hollywood, just things have completely changed around here. Just be used to be me, you, and a couple of microphones. Um, did you see the uh, squabble between Elon Musk and um, what's that bitch's name from Massachusetts? Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren. Warren. Yeah. No, I did not. He she tweeted out yesterday. You know, he was named Time Man of the Year, which is very deserving. She tweeted out, "We need to fix these loopholes so Mr. Time Man of the Year can start paying his taxes, fair share of taxes." And he wrote back, he said, well, let me tell you something. This year, I'm going to pay $15 billion in taxes, which is a record for anyone. Mm-hmm. But, oh, wait, you've already spent that money. <laughs> <laughs> he's smart. He's a smart guy. And um, Oh, he's know. riding her ass right now on Twitter about shit. <clears throat> she tweets something, he fucking answers right back to her shit. Calls her, call, called her uh, Senator Karen. Oh, really? Uh-huh. I like that he, uh, you know, the... What is it? The World Hunger Organization or something like that came after him and said two percent of his wealth will will could cure cure world hunger. And he said, you know, quite frankly, if uh, if if uh, if you will open your books and explain in this tweet thread how two percent of my wealth, I think it's like six billion dollars or something like that, would solve world hunger, I will sell Tesla stocks and. Right we'll check. fix world hunger. That's and right. they, that, as far as I know, he has not sold uh, $6 billion worth of Tesla stock. So, no, and you know, he's da- a smart guy. And you know damn well that any other organization out there that really and truly needy yep. would have taken him up on that offer to show him, hey, look, here's what it is. Another thing, too. Just is, open your books. That's all he wanted. Just show oh. me where the money's going. Tell me how my money is going to solve this issue, and I'll write you a check. Well, the cunt from Massachusetts, she, uh, She's bitching about Elon Musk, and there's a video of her yesterday getting off of a private jet. She paid five thousand dollars, and she made twelve million dollars last year. Her taxes were only five thousand dollars. He's paying fifteen billion. So I'm telling you, what, she, she has taken on the wrong person to have a battle with. Yes, hundred percent. He said, "I came to the U.S. with no money and graduated with over a hundred thousand in debt, despite scholarships and working two jobs at school." Yeah, he, he's the problem in our country. Let me tell you. He's African, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's a true African American. South African? Yes. Well, he doesn't count. No. Um, what did he come over for? Just better himself, or did it, it, was I'm it like an education and probably a, a scholarship somewhere? Well, I have family that is from South Africa, also, Jeff. Married, married family, but um, you do what now? Um, one of Jesse's cousins married a South African, <laughs> and so you're kin to him, huh? What would you call it? 
I would not call that enough that you, her, her cousin is married to a guy from South Africa. Correct. I really would not consider that much of a kin. He's at all the all the all the holidays. What would you? He's not family. He's Blake, like, Blake like and family. Stoner he, it'll be our at, at Blake and Stoner. Ed was at all of ours. Were you kin to him? I count I count I counted Ed as family when he was well, here. Okay, me too. But I count Blake as family. I, I count Josh as family. I think you're going. I, I can't count this guy's family. I think that, you're going, that's out of bounds. So you're you're kin to a South African now is what you're saying. I'm family with a South African. No, you're Peter kin to a South African by a cousin. So no, I mean I guess legally you and him could get married probably in thirteen states or some shit. But mm-hmm. that's between y'all. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, what about it? So, you're trying to claim now that you're kin to some South Africans? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, me and Elon are basically cousins now. But, no, what I was going to say is the reason this guy came over is because his family got chased off of their land. Yeah. The, the, the uh, apartheid. The backwards. tribes or whatever came and said, listen, you've got until the end of the week. And I think they, like, took beheaded a cow or some shit like that. And they were like, at the end of the week, if you're still here... A lot more pe- a lot more than just the cow are going to be losing their head. So they uh, they just abandon everything. Perfect, perfect chance in history for an experiment to see where they've run all these farmers off. I don't know the history behind South Africa and all the farms. I don't know. It was colonization. I don't know how all that took place. Right. But I'm going to bet you in 30 years from now, if they run all them white farmers and ranchers off those places, that those things are not thriving enterprises in 30 years. Because if you look at all the inner cities that have been taken over, none of them are thriving. Right. It's kind of like it's kind of like the Muslims. You sh- you name me a city in the world, in the world, not just in America, in the world that is controlled by Muslims that's thriving. Other than the oil, that's it. There's not a place. They're all shitholes now. Mm. Benghazi, Tripoli. I think you're. T- I think you're cherry picking there, but okay. Name me one that's thriving. And this ain't from me. You know who? You know who talked about this five six years ago when mm. I used to listen to him some. Skip Bayless. No, no, no. Actually, Glenn Beck. no. Howard Stern, who I'm not a big fan of, but Howard no. Stern's not a dumb man. No, no. Howard He's Stern not. talked about this with the Jews. Everywhere the Jewish people were in control, it was a good place. Mm-hmm. Everywhere the Muslims are, it's a shithole. Everywhere. Every place they go to take over turns into a shithole. Yeah, pretty much. And that's and he, he made a really good point, and I've, lo- I've noticed that. Now we got cities that the Muslims are taking over. Minneapolis. What's it turning into? Many hopeless. A shithole. Because the Muslim policies are horrible. Because they, they, they have no policies. Afghanistan. There was a time Afghanistan was... You can look pictures up of Afghanistan from like 1970, 72. It wasn't a bad place. Uh, Cordoba? Cordoba, Spain? Mm-hmm. What about it? Uh, um, I just looked up towns. Thriving Arab American communities. No, I said Muslim. Oh. Country, co- cities. Well, I mean, if... if, if Not all if, Arabs if, if, are if, if. Muslims. Oh. Well, e- Egypt know. is split between Christianity and Muslims. Hmm. Do you know... Oh, you weren't in the ta- you weren't in the Uber with us. We had a guy from <clears throat> Egypt that was our uh, Uber driver, and he was not on the Muslim side at all. And I was afraid to say anything because you don't know. This says Philadelphia, which I have a hard time of believing That's that. That's not Muslim control. Um, it says Muslim town. I'll look inside Philadelphia. Philadelphia's thriving Muslim community. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm no. not going to click on all this. I'm just no. going to take your word they're, for they're it. They're saying Muslim, thriving Muslim community. That's not a thriving area. But you take any city in America, Dearborn, Michigan, that's controlled by Muslims, and they, 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 they're, they're shitholes. I'm guessing probably a Muslim was in charge of the Flint water system, but just my guess. Look at America. We had a Muslim fucking president for eight years. It turned into a shithole. They did. Now we've got a Muslim running the things again through a through an old man. Reese, what are you doing, bud? Or Jameson? Jameson. What are you doing, bud? You need your jacket's unzipped. Andy's on babysitting duty today. I don't think it's babysitting when it's your own kid, though. Andy's on dad duty today. Yep. And I think mama's at work. Jameson. Are you my favorite grandkid? Didn't answer. That's a yes, though, because I make hot chocolate for him. Oh, Urban Meyer is out in Jacksonville. That is why Jacksonville is always going to be Jacksonville. You know, they had a guy, good or bad, they had a guy 
They knew what Urban Meyer was. A piece of shit. They knew that going but he's in. He's a winner. He's left every every place he's left has, has he's left in shambles. Yep. They knew this and they took a shot on him. Mm-hmm. But I don't agree with getting rid of him after 15 weeks, 14 I, weeks. I didn't think Texas Tech should fire their coach during the middle of the season. I don't think any coach, I don't think you're doing you're benefiting anybody by firing a coach halfway through a season. No. I don't, no matter how bad things are. I agree. And allegedly he kicked a kicker, said make your fucking field goals or something like that, kicked him in the shins. Well, he is a kicker. Well, I mean, do your fucking job. Joe Bob Tyler could not coach football today, one of the greatest high school football coaches in Texas ever, because he would slap you on your ass, he would fucking use a paddle, he would grab you by your face mask, he'd get in your face. And you know what? I don't think any man alive today that is between the ages of 50 and 60 and 8 and dead, Coach Tyler coached forever, ever, ever has something that they, from back in the day, that's a problem for them for getting abused by their coach, physically or mentally. Right. Or verbally. So, kids today are fucking soft. He probably shouldn't have kicked, 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 should have kicked him if back. If that's I true. If it's true. But they hired a piece of shit, and that's what they got. They got exactly what they had. Urban Meyer is a piece of shit human being. He is a very good football coach, but he is a piece, piece of shit human being. He covered up for Aaron Hernandez in Florida. He covered up for, uh, for Cam Newton in Florida. He covered up for uh, fuck everywhere he's been. He covered up for that coach that was abusing his wife. Mm-hmm. At Ohio State, I mean, he's a, he's a he's a piece of shit, and they hired him. But the problem in the NFL is, and it's funny. I read an article a week ago about this. Owner, go ahead. Ownership in the NFL. Back in the day, the owners of the NFL were usually football people. That's how they got to be owners of an NFL franchise. It wasn't a business move. It wasn't an investment like it is now. So now what you've got is you've got this guy like Khan, and I don't know Khan's story other than he's inherited billions of dollars. Is he somebody. a Muslim? I th- I think he is. I don't know. He's got now, a Muslim you can't name. Put, you can't put that on him because the Jacksonville Jaguars, I wouldn't, I other wouldn't. than the 90s, of all, well, you just said everything the Muslim touch goes to shit. Well, I there you go. I thought you were about to. No, no, it no. It was no, shit no. when he bought them. No, I'm not talking about everything a Muslim. I'm talking about when they run a municipality, a country or a city. If the Muslims are running, it's a piece of shit. Uh, if Khan, I don't know Khan's story. But Khan inherited all his money somehow. I don't know the whole story, but they were talking about the NFL owners. You've got the Hunt family. You've got the Maras. You've got the Roonies that own the Pittsburgh Steelers. You've got the Bolins that own the Denver Broncos. Those teams that are old ownership, other than the Cincinnati Bengals, have been winning for a long time. They have their ups and downs. The Giants are in a bad spin right now, but it wasn't very long ago they were in the playoffs and they beat the New England in the Super Bowl, what, 12 years ago? Or something? The, the Giants? Yeah. Uh, 2009? Okay, 11, 12 years ago. But I'm saying every every 10 to 20 years, they have a good run and they do really well. Well, these new owners, they don't know shit about football. Con don't know nothing about football. Right. Hire a football guy and let him run it and stay the fuck away from it and go to your yacht with all your women and stuff and have fun. Enjoy life. Jerry Jones is another owner. You know, and the Cowboy fans are going to hate this, but the Cowboys are real irrelevant. I mean, they're good right now. They were good five years ago. They'll be a playoff team. And they team. were good. Yeah, they, they're a playoff team. They haven't been in a Super Bowl in 25 years, I don't think. Right. They have been irrelevant. They've had right. a couple of good teams up and on. But Jerry Jones is too involved. He gets involved with everything, with the personal relationship with the players, to trying to run the coaches and stuff. And so they're never going to have a coach that's going to be a strong coach because they, won't, they won't work under him. Well, you can either be like – the giant, the, the the Steelers are a perfect example of a good franchise. In my lifetime, the Steelers have had three football coaches. Right. The Cowboys have had six in the last ten years or something. This says he's acute. This says it happened during the preseason. Former Jacksonville Jaguars kicker Josh Lambeau says Urban Meyer kicked him during preseason. I don't think that's why he got fired. Then he got fired because they're losing and he's not done a very good job with Trevor Lawrence. But I don't. Is Trevor Lawrence the one that's pulling the strings now? Is he saying all of a sudden that you know Urban Meyer needs to go if 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 I'm gonna if I'm gonna play well? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it had anything to do with Trevor Lawrence. I think it had to do with some bad decisions. They've also had some bad luck. They 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 went out and signed Nick Foles. And he got his fucking shoulder broke the first game. Remember that? Yeah, but he was never going to be the answer. But they didn't know that. He just won a Super Bowl at Philadelphia. So they gave him a big contract, and they brought him in there. They brought in some offensive linemen, and they had a lot of injuries. Well, then, that, that, and they've drafted really well. Look at the players they drafted. Jalen Ramsey. That uh, they, they Who's no longer with them. 
they, they traded him. But I'm saying they have done some good draft. They've done, they have made some really good draft picks. Their problem is, is they've had, they've got tons of injuries every year. They went and got him a quarterback. Then they drafted that Travis Etienne kid and he blew out his knee in his preseason. Name. But they need to go. I, I, I'll tell you who that I think they should hire. Has nothing, and, and this has nothing to do with anything connections to Jacksonville. I think they need to go hire the the guy that was at Tampa Bay before Bruce Arians. Um, God, raw, uh, white guy. Yeah, what was his uh, name? Raheem Morris. Raheem Morris. They need a guy like there. There, a, a no bullshit kind of guy is what they need. That that the players can relate to. Kind of a players coach type of guy. And, and, and that's what they need to do. They need to quit trying to hire these old white fuddy-duddy fuckers. I, I've never understood that. You go somewhere and you coach, and you're 3-13 and 13 for two years in a row. You get out of football, then somebody hires you back in two years. I mean, look at Mike McCarty in Dallas. Right. He, they're, they're, Dallas is having the same fucking problems Green Bay did with him. You know? He won in Green Bay because of the talent he had. Because of Aaron Rodgers. Yes. Well, in Dallas right now, when Dak's healthy – and Tyrone Smith's healthy, they win. When they're, they're not, really they good. don't do no good. He's the same coach. He's not. He hasn't changed any. Right. But they keep giving him chances and stuff, you know. So if I was the Jacksonville Jaguars, I would go hire me a hard nosed football coach and let him coach. And I would turn. I'd give him a five year contract, and I would make a promise to myself: in five years, I'm not going to fire him, no matter what happens. If we go zero and seventeen next year, we're not going to fire him. You know, we're going to build a team and build a franchise. That's the only way they're ever going to get out of it. University of Texas, perfect example. They're never going to win because they don't have no fucking solidity. Right. Everybody fucking gets ran off after one year. Mm -hmm. I agree. And this is wearing you out, isn't it? This it sound. is. This buzz, yes, it's wearing me. It's, it really is. What, do you think it's a plug-in? I don't, I don't know what it is. But. <clears throat> it comes and goes is what's crazy. Yeah. Um, I, like I said, I, I ordered, uh. This is, this is basically just a fucking money pit running a podcast. but uh, Everybody wants to do a podcast, too. It's a fucking money pit. <laughs> um, you know. Well, Jesus Christ. $100 here or there, you better just fucking. Look around at us. We've. Sign, it, sign up for it. Thousands of dollars in cameras now. Thousands of dollars in fucking recording equipment. Thousands of dollars in laptops. And we're still upgrading all the time. All the time. What, what's the next thing we're getting? Uh, we will get these microphones over there for the guests. Um, probably new mic stands eventually because you don't like these. I'm used to these now. Well, I don't know. I mean, hell, it's uh, there's always something to, to improve on. Um, let's talk about the weather for a minute. Oh, what a what, what weird. I'm not talking about the lack of cold weather. I'm talking about the tornado outbreaks in December in places that typically don't have severe weather this time of year. Oh, right. I mean, it's fucking nuts. You know what? I was thinking about this yesterday. I watched that system go across from Iowa to Minnesota at Wisconsin. If it was 30 degrees cooler, this would have been the Armistice Day storm all over again. Right. 80 mile an hour winds out of nowhere. They said they had sustained winds, I think, in Great Bend, Kansas, of 80 miles an hour yesterday. Luke sent a uh, Snapchat, and I guess it blew through fairly quickly. I don't know. I, I I think it did with the big long, the strong strong winds. But you think about eighty mile that, that those are straight line thunderstorm winds that tear up shit all the time. Right. When you get to eighty mile an hour winds, you're gonna have a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. And it just it, it's in. It, are we gonna have another one of these next week now? Uh, I don't know. What's, I mean, what 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 does the weather say? Right now for next week, it's gonna be cooler. It's cooler today than I thought it was gonna be. It's gonna be in the fifties here all day today, and I was not expecting that. I just don't know. With the weather anymore, I just <clears throat> is this is this is it a cycle? Are we going to come through this? Is this the new normal? I don't, I, I don't know. One of the guys that's coming to settle up, I just got a text from one of our, from the group deal that one of the guys that's hunting with us right now, they had tornado damage at their home last night. Right. He's got to get back home. Boy, I tell you what, I feel sorry for him because can you imagine? Being on a hunting trip with your buddies and having tornado damage at your house, can you imagine the conversation from your wife? Mm -hmm. Why aren't you home? Better get here. And you yeah. know that's what's happening. But last week, those poor that tornado on the ground last week was on the ground for two hundred and forty miles. Would that have been? That wouldn't have been a good one to chase, though. Well, you got two hundred and forty fucking miles to watch it. 
Well, but I mean. It was a nighttime tornado. It's very dangerous. Uh, it was a deadly tornado. It would have been a horrible chase day. It would have been a horrible day to be chasing and come up on that stuff. Now, but did anything happen in Minnesota and Wisconsin I last have, night? I saw a deal from Wisconsin. They have a ton of damage, but nobody got injured. Oh. Here, here, here's my thoughts on this, and I've said this before. There is no excuse to be hurt in a hurricane. Zero. Right. You have four and five days notice. The problem is everybody thinks, oh, it's not going to be bad, and then they wait till too long, and then they're fucked. There's no excuse on a, on a, on a hurricane. On a tornado, there's no ch- – a lot of times you have no warnings. You have 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. These last two storms, these last two nights, there's been plenty of play to let you know how bad it was going to be. Guy, guy put that on the podcast page. He goes, well, what's everybody's prediction? My prediction is if you have a basement, stay in your basement when the storms come in. Be underground, you know? Mm-hmm. There's no reason not to be. Those poor people in that candle factory or something, somebody working there screwed up. Some Those people should have had apt time to be have a plan, a contingency plan to put in. See, I, well, well, I don't know about a candle there store. There was a candle factory in Kentucky that I think 50 people passed away in from the storm the other day. 50 people? I, I believe so. Oof. That that storm, everybody knew all day it was going to happen. That company should have had a contingency plan to, hey, it, it, uh, you still have destructive storms. Sometimes you can't do nothing about it. But there should have been a contingency plan. Hey, we're supposed to have really bad weather tonight. This is what we do. I mean, they said schools shut down in a lot of places yesterday in the afternoon because of these storms coming through. Right. We've shut down storms here on big tornado days we're supposed to have. You know, better be safe than sorry. I can't imagine that they couldn't have some plan for their employees. Someone yeah. got killed at an Amazon factory. Really? And w- w- now I don't know how true this is, but I read that the people, the 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 supervisor wouldn't let them leave their work spot. At an Amazon place? Yeah, uh, well, that makes sense. I don't know if that's true or not. Jeff, Amazon is all about their bottom dollar. Well, I'm sure that's probably true. All about it. But anyway, mm. someone passed away there, and I don't know the. I don't want to say something and then it, it be more different than what it is i heard some more story on the whooping cranes in oklahoma today too Uh oh i heard those cranes were shot in november and we're just and now, they just hearing now about released they just now released all the um i mean so it didn't happen release. like last two days ago From what i understand it happened in early november i don't know if that's true or not right you know how the rumor mill is but oh I'm yeah as, i'm assuming if this happened in early november and they got a reward out now they don't have a fucking clue who did it that's my thing is how are they going to prove I mean, unless they like ping what was on the uh, the bird and maybe match that up with cell phone towers, that That's, seems like a lot of fucking work. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, the FBI will do anything they can to catch someone killing a whooping crane. They're not gonna find Hunter like Biden's laptop, but by God, they will do this, right? Or yeah. Hillary's emails, you know. But you're, you're, that's exactly how they're going to catch somebody, probably. Hanging it. Is they're going to probably do cell phone tire coverage of anybody that was within that area. With the, they know where the birds were shot, and if you had a cell phone on. And your cell phone was there at that time. You're gonna have to have some. An- you're gonna have to answer some questions. Right. I, I I assume that was the opening week of. From what I understand, it was the opening week of 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 crane and goose season up there, or duck season. And they're gonna do everything they can. They're gonna check out of state hunting license for sandhill crane permits. They're gonna check because I'm assuming someone was crane hunting that did this. Well, yeah, you'd figure. And so, it happened on a WMA. I heard. I'm probably saying stuff that's all undercover that I'm not supposed to talk about, but whoever Did told you me this. get this from a federal No, 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 no. I got this. And from, I wouldn't worry I, about I'm it not. too much. That's what I'm saying. I got this just from a, a somebody. But uh, I'll be getting a call next week. Uh, Mr. Stanfield, we'd like to come and talk to you, please. Mr. Stanfield, what do you know about but, uh, whooping cranes? But there's a lot of out-of-state hunters there, but I'm, I'm they're going to probably cross whoever bought a, a license somewhere within that area. Or they're going to check cell phone coverage. And they, I wouldn't be surprised if they find out. The thing is, is surely to God, there's not a group of guys that done this are stupid enough to go tell people. But then again, you know how that goes. Yeah. There's sure. some guy went back to his office and said, you ain't going to believe this shit, but we fucked up some cranes this week. We fucked and them up, shot cranes. some four albinos, and I don't know. Surely they know, like, this is a big-time deal, and I just need to find my P's and Q's. But there's a lot of idiots. Well, the, you know, kind of like the guys that stole all that money from the Mirage Casino. They just t- talked about it? No, kid. Uh, two guys kidnapped Steve Wynn's daughter when he owned the Mirage. Kidnapped them. 
They're a little loud in that other room. Kidnapped Steve Wynn's daughter on the Mirage and got her kidnapped. Wanted $15 million. I don't know. It could have been $10 million. And he went down in the safe and got $10 million or $15 million out and took it to him somewhere out in the desert and gave it to her, and they gave his daughter back. They would have got away with it. But he went around and bought a new Ferrari with cash and Lamborghini with cash and two guys making 12 bucks an hour spending $150,000 in cash on cars. Well, guess what happens? They get caught. Raise some suspicion. So some dipshit probably... I don't know anything about the case, but I'm going to bet you this. If they catch who did it, it's going to be over a picture on an iPhone or a cell phone. Ding is how they're going to catch them. That girl just better be glad she's she, she was not J. Paul Getty granddaughter. He gave zero fucks about his grandchild. He just didn't want someone else trying to steal him. That was a really good series. Yeah. He, he was a weird cat, boy. Woo. Bit of a dick. You know, I have not. I haven't watched a series on TV probably since that one that's on actual real TV. Uh, we haven't. Well, I don't know. Since hunting season's on, I haven't even turned on Netflix much. I watched uh, Narcos Mexico, the new one. I started watching. I've got, I'm halfway through it right now. When Fox was here, we watched Bad Sport. That was a good show. What is that about? Uh, the episode that we watched, it was about the Arizona State uh, oh, I watched scandal. that. I watched that. That was. Really, I forgot about that. I, I have started watching it. There's some more of them on there. Yeah. Um, the Nancy Kerrigan one was on there, and Tanya Harding, right? I don't know if that is or not. The ice skating deal. Lucas Bellinger said that uh, the Arizona State was the only one worth the shit. That was a really good one, though. Oh, headache. Those kids too, man, got greedy. Everybody does. That's how you get caught. Well, I, and it cost him being an NBA player. I just like the guy that, like, fronted this whole thing. He was like, now, I had no plans on getting involved. And I, blah, blah, blah. And, like, you know, because he's given his testimony. And he's like, you know, they just, they sucked me into this and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I I, I saw, uh, you know, how much money they were going to make. And all of a sudden, he's fucking ringleader. Do you? Like, calm down on that shit because you're not as innocent as you think that you are. If, if or you're I, pre- pretending to be. If I was going to be doing some sports betting like that, would you be more worried about getting caught or getting the mob get a hold of you? See, that's what I thought was going to happen. I thought the mob was going to get involved. They're not that loud, are they? Um, I thought because towards the end it talked about this big, burly, redheaded guy that got involved. Probably Jameson in there that, that – creating a ruckus um but they said that there was this redheaded guy that all of a sudden started poking around so yeah. I, th- I think your odds would be better if you just got caught by the government because the mob's not going to play by any set of rules no not spe- well i don't know about today i don't know how much the mob ruins vegas like they used to they used to own the casinos and everything now most of that shit's owned by corporations like mgm and shit so, mm-hmm. I, so I, I don't I don't know how much they're involved. You know, Stanley Adelson, I think is his name. He or Sheldon Adelson. He owns uh the Venetian and Steve Wynn owns the Wynn properties. And I saw where the Mirage was getting sold to someone the other day. Just saw it for like twelve billion dollars or some shit. But those are those are big, big it's not the same as Guido's gonna come fucking break your arms and shit like it used to be. For some reason, on my Facebook feed, I've been getting a lot of mob stuff. I watched Goodfellas the other when I was sick. That's what I watched. I watched Goodfellas and I watched Heat. I, what's Heat? With Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. You've seen it. I don't it, think I've seen it. Oh my god! Yes, you've had to have seen Heat. Heat. It is I, the greatest movie ever. Wow. Greatest ever? I'd put it up there. Huh? That's a pretty bold statement. It's got Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. It was at the time. The only time that they had shared screen time together. What is it about? Bank robbers. Robert De Niro's a bank robber. And Al Pacino's a cop. A wily veteran. He gets in charge of, of, you know, catching these guys. It's got Val Kilmer in it. It's got Tom Sizemore. It's got Danny Trejo. I don't know that I I don't know that I've seen. I'm not saying I haven't. I don't know that I've seen. Jesus Christ, Jeff, you've seen. I don't know that I have. I'll tell you a good movie with with Dickhead De Niro, and I'm not a fan of his. I saw I did, I did see a picture of him and uh, Prince Andrew at Epstein Island. A picture of them the other day together. Heat, there it is, right there. Heat. I don't think I've seen that. Oh my goodness, 1995. I may have to watch that then. The three hour movie. Trust me, when you're sick on the couch, 
That's the kind of movie you the, want. The movie that he had out last year about Jimmy Hoffa was a good movie. Michael Mann made it, wrote it, produced what, it. What's the one about Hoffa that come out this year? Huh? With with De Niro in it and um, fucking what's the small uncle? What's the guy from Cousin Benny? Oh, that was the Irishman. That was a good show. I never watched it. You never watched it? <clears throat> it's a very good movie. A very very good movie. But anyway, after I watch Goodfellas, I've been getting bombarded on Facebook with um, uh, there's a there's a there's a old there's a mob guy that got out. Michael Francis, I think, is his name, and he's a Christian now. And um, but anyway, him and Sammy the Bull have been going at one another, and you know they go they go at each other. And they what are done, you talking about now? Sammy the Bull. Are you talking about Goodfellas? No, 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 no. I watch Goodfellas. Oh, okay, 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 I got you. Facebook now. knew that I watched Goodfellas. Okay. So now I'm getting all this mob shit in my video section. I, I, I scroll two or three times on Facebook, and I'm getting all this mob stuff. Anyway, there's a guy, Michael Franchis. Um, he, he, was, he was an underboss for one of the five families. and um, But anyway, him and Sammy the Bull don't like one another. They've been going at each other, and... Uh, he just can't believe that Sammy the Bull killed 19 people, and he's out. He's a, he's a serial killer. In any other in any other sense of the word, if you're not working for the mob and you kill 19 people, you're a serial killer. Yeah, but most of the times, those people that are yeah, they're not really classified as serial killers. Why not? Because they're hitmen. But he killed 19 people. I'm not disagreeing with you on that. You just don't call it. They don't call them serial killers. They're just hitmen for the mob. So did, one thing. Hold though, on. Did De Niro play Sammy the Bull? In, in, in Irishman? I don't remember his name. Sammy Garvano? I guess so. He was a ruthless fucker, though. So, De Niro? Oh, I'll have to watch that then. It's a good show. It's a really good movie, and I, I can't stand De Niro. But he Jesse played, and the he boys are going out of town, so I'll have to. It's, it's a very good movie. It's a three-hour long one, too. I'll have to watch that. It's very, very good. Um, And then I watched, what else is he in that I like? I liked Casino with him. Look at that. Of all the Michaels in the world, I type in Michael in the Google search, and Michael Francis is the one that pops up. Well, you were looking at stuff that was cross-related. But to that's it. what I'm saying. They, they're they listening, man. They know about us. I don't think they're listening. I think they they're are. Listening. How does You're telling me that Michael Francis and this uh, – I type in Michael, and that's the Michael that pops up. You not hit, Michael Jordan, not Michael Myers. You not, just had po- been looking up. Damien the Bull. That's right. And so that was, And i just it, been talking about and it. And so it was correlated to it. I don't think they're listening. I just they're think listening. they're what, what it's called. What is it called? Their uh, algorithms. Their algorithms just. They knew that I was going to look up Michael well, Francis. No, who they thought they were doing. He was a. Uh, his dad was a member of the Colombo crime family, so uh, Sammy the Bull's biggest biggest complaint with this guy is that his he used his dad. Um, but anyway, he he did something with gasoline. Back in the days, he spearheaded. He was the he was the mastermind behind that. This this Michael Franchise, the government out of gasoline money. Did you? Uh, what does that mean? Federal. They were getting federal subsidies for gasoline taxes, and he was figuring a way to screw them out of it. I he think, was getting eight million dollars a, a week. Good lord, could you imagine? Well, Whitey Bulger, you know, he lived. He he disappeared and lived for about ten years in San Diego. Yep, and for the, and they fucking killed his ass, eighty something years old, and they popped his ass in funeral in, in prison. He said that would happen too. Yep, killed him with a bike, with a fucking uh, padlock, put it in a sock, and beat the piss out of him. Yeah. I think. Let me look at some. Have you have you seen them? There, there's a Netflix story about the Montreal gang. Have you ever seen that? No. Montreal mob. It was pretty good too, and I wish I could think of the name of it. This might be graphic, but I'm pretty sure it. They show his face. Oh, I don't want to see that shit. Um. Yeah, there it is. Oh. Like, beat him. Well, maybe not. In a wheelchair. But um. Yeah, they 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 did a number on him. It's October thirtieth. It's hard to feel sorry for. Within hours, he didn't even make it a day. It was hours he made it. That he was unrecognizable. He was only five six. The New York Times, if you. Trust that. Well, you know, I saw that they've one of them. One of the New York Pace, uh, papers has come out critical of Joe Biden. They're already talking about how they need to get someone else to run in his place. They're talking about uh, Mayor Pete now, or Kamala. 
which I don't. I think they're in big trouble. The inmate who killed Waddy Bolger, Boston's notorious crime boss, deliberately moved out of view of surveillance camera in West Virginia's prison before pummeling him with a padlock that was stuffed inside a sock. Oof, what a way to go. 89 years old. In a wheelchair into a corner where the attack p- took place. Here's the deal. Why? Because I know they moved. What, he was like in, he was in uh, solitary confinement or something, and then they moved him out into. <laughs> Why would you put him in, in, a, in, a, in a same spot as Freddie Geese, or whatever you say, Geese, a mafia hitman from West Springfield, Massachusetts. He is serving a life sentence in, for killing the leader of the Genovese crime family in Springfield. So that's who you're going to have him by, another guy that killed some. I mean. Right. I think they did this intentionally just to get, get rid of him. I don't know. But he said, he said whenever he was going just like into the general population, I won't make it a day. And motherfucker, he was right. Well, and the guy, that they, they said the guy hated people that cooperated with the Fed so bad that he was offered a plea bargain and he said he took life in prison instead of taking his plea bargain because he didn't want to be one of them rats. At least two inmates were quickly sent to solitary confinement. Uh, but, you know, like you said, though, Whitey Bulger ruined a lot of lives. I mean, yeah. that's a vicious end to for an 89-year-old. You hate he, to see that, but... He got what was coming to him. He was a fucking scumbucket that mo- ruined a whole lot of lives in Boston. That, you know, those guys shooting and killing each other. The average person in Boston could give two shits if they killed each other. It was right. thugs shooting thugs. It's the same thing with the, in Chicago on the south side with the gangs. You know, it's most gang, most black on black gang violence is people that are just shooting each other, just bad people. And all they're doing is getting shot before they shoot somebody else. Right. You know, it's not like they're shooting road, road scholars or shooting guys that are robbing and carjacking. And it's kind of like the guy in Minnesota that was the, um, oh shit. What was it? What's the guy's name that just was the lady cop shot him? The, mm. the black kid that was in the car and, and she went to grab her taser and she pulled a gun and shot and killed him. Oh, yeah. I remember that. I don't know. I don't know his name. That kid was a thug. He fucking held a gun, robbed people and stuff. And I've seen a lot. And, and these were black victims of crime that come out against him and said, you know, he got exactly what he deserved. You know, a lot of times this, these, these black on black crimes, that, that all it is doing is, is, is killing people that are doing the same fucking thing that happened to them, somebody else. I mean, it goes on and on and on. It's just a vicious cycle. He, this Michael Francisco, he said the mob could, it can't, it, 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 it's a dead enterprise. You can't get out of it. Well, no, 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 no. It's just, it, it, they're, they're, they're still there, but just barely. Well, their way of life is different now. Well, fucking, you've legalized marijuana. You know, at first the mob was not big into the drugs. And then they got into the drug business. It used to be gambling and women. Wasn't that in drinking. casino? They weren't going to get into the drug game or something? Yeah. Some was, shit like that? The Nero just, didn't want to get into it, but Pesci yep, did? Yep. And that was the big thing. So then they got into the drug business. But it, it started out as ga- alcohol, the number game, the number racket. And then they went into full-born gambling. Then it was bookie service. It was, it was just all kinds of shit. And then they would steal, and they then they offered protection, and just they finally just ran out of... You can't get by with that shit anymore. It's not the 30s and 40s and 50s anymore. What do you think about these kids signing with these schools or getting millions of dollars to go play college football somewhere? They've ruined college football. I think it's fantastic. You think it's fantastic? It's fantastic. Play, play the that? players. Play them. Pay them. Pay them, Jeff. Well, it's not the colleges. Universities are making millions. The universities aren't the ones that's paying them. Um, I believe we need to have – I believe Texas Tech needs to pony up, do whatever it takes to get these five-star recruits the out universe, there. The university – you're the – Sonny you're Dykes. The reason. You're the one. Sonny Dykes, pay them, pay him. Sonny Dykes isn't at Texas Tech. Well, he's got he's got strings out there. He's at TCU now. He's got strings out there. You Di- Rager, Rager, well, they're in trouble. You pay. It's you. It's the alumni. It's not the universities paying these kids. I thought it was like individual companies out there. Like a like a a, a, a car lot or whatever. Rager Dykes. I thought they're paying these kids. It's all kinds of places. Right. Somebody said Barstool Sports was gonna pay this kid. Five million dollars that signed with Jackson State that was going to, or one point five million that, that signed with to go play with Deion Sanders, right? One point five. It's not the universities that's paying for him. It's you. I understand. As an alumni of Texas Tech, are you going to write a check to a kid to come play football there? Well, Jeff, if I had the means, I one hundred percent. Well, you got the means because I lot can't of guys, write a kid a hundred one point five million dollar check to go play at Texas Tech. No, 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 you can't. But a guy like you could write a three thousand dollar check, and if fifty thousand guys like you would write a three thousand dollar check, you'd be set. 
Are you going to do your fair share to recruit a quarterback for them? Or well, Jeff, it depends on, you know, all this. I think it's ruining college football. College football is becoming just a – some kids are going to take a pay cut to go to the pros. Shit. Travis Hunter? Is that who? Yes, that's the kid. What did he do? He just signed with – he was the number one recruit. He was going to Florida State. He was the number two recruit in the country, and he signed with Deion, ja Deion Sanders. Now, he's a defensive back going to see Deion Sanders. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But if you think schools like SMU are not going to become relevant again, you've lost your mind. What's interesting here is before Dion went to work for Jackson State, I believe he was an employee of Barstool. So do you think he went to Dave Portnoy and said, hey, there's this kid that I really want, but he's signed, he's signed elsewhere? Can Probably. you give him? Probably. Um, I had a kid message me not too long ago. A kid from Clemson? No, I'd have to look. We had a linebacker from Clemson got a hold of us wanting us to pay him money to support us. Like, fuck you, buddy. No, this kid, he played baseball, and he's like, hey, is there any way, how do I get paid from Filson? I can do that now as a college athlete, uh, and they're my favorite company. I'm like, fuck, I don't have a clue. Call Filson. I don't even get fucking paid by Filson. Yeah. That could, this, this linebacker, I was like, his agent called me. Or his, I guess it wouldn't be his agent because that would be against the law, but. Some guy called representing him wanting to know if we would be interested. In sport. He loves to hunt, and he likes the podcast, blah, blah. So, buddy, if you're listening to you, good fucking luck. I've watched him games this year, and I, you, you better do something besides play football. That's, Stan. that's, that's not very nice. No. I think, I th you know, uh, whatever. Let's, let's try this. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I don't – I think it's ruining football. Wow. I think it's great that this kid went to Jackson State. I think you're going to have certain – I'm going to tell you right now, the people in college football, all you people in Ohio State, all you people in Alabama, all you people in Clemson, Georgia, uh, Oklahoma – I'm not going to say Texas because we need to fucking drop football and take up swimming anyways. You better hope to fucking hell that Ivy League schools like Harvard don't get into this pay-to-play deal because their pockets are deeper than yours. And you think all so? Do you think out. Alabama's going to get outbid by Harvard? Or yeah. Stanford. Yes. No. Look up Harvard's fucking how much money no. they have in but there. But you just said the universities aren't the ones that are paying these kids. No. But you look up how much money <clears throat> these co these colleges have in their, uh, what's it called? Like endowments. The endowments. And look and see who's got all the money endowments. You can't, Alabama can't fucking afford what Harvard can afford because the endowments are so different. That's what I'm saying. If them schools in the Ivy League ever get their fucking liberal fuckheads that all went to school there ever start paying money to these the, these kids to come play football, then that's where all the money, the kids are going to go. If your kid's a quarterback, Quinn yours, and you can go to Austin for five million dollars, which they gave him to go down there, or you can go to Harvard and make twenty million a year, where the fuck are you going to send your kid to go school at? I think I think I think Harvard has forty billion dollars. I think their kids are going to realize that. $5 million is enough. I'm going to p play for a good organization. You don't think so? No. I do. No. What would you rather? You would rather if, You would rather go to Harvard and suck for $20 million, knowing he, that you're the only one that's out there worth a shit? You think they're going to only go get one kid? Yes. No. That's all they're going to get. No. One, no, cause, they're not. Because they're not a football school, Jeff. They don't realize it takes a whole what? team. SMU. It's not a football school. But in the 80s, they were because they could afford to pay for the biggest players. It only takes one senior class to turn the tide on your football program. If Harvard went out and signed 10 of the top high school kids and they gave them all $5 million and their endowment got together and they said, you know what, all this rich alumni, let's all throw in $5 million a piece. It's chump change to us, $50 million. And they There's your list right there. Texas A&M is on the list. They're like number six. Yeah, and look at the difference, University though. of Pennsylvania. Look at the difference, though. I'm not saying there's not a difference, but I'm saying they're on the list. So it's Notre, Notre Dame, Dame. University yeah. of Michigan. Yes. They're at $12 million. MIT Harvard, doesn't even have I mean, a football $12 billion. program. That's right. But you look at the $41 billion, 31 at Yale. That, what I'm saying, if, if one of them schools ever decided that their alumni all wanted to get in the football business, they could buy all these players. And they'll be good. That, that, that's what I just said. Well, why, why is that a bad thing? Maybe it's their time. Maybe we're going to find out how good of a coach Saban is. Get, well, him, get him up against a super school well, like, he's not like gonna, Harvard. He's not going to win with two-star two players playing five-star schools. No. But what, the, what I'm saying is, is they're going to turn college into minor league pros. You, you, More than that. Okay, but you take Quinn Ewers. be like Ewers, basketball. Okay, if Quinn Ewers is going to get $5 million to go to Texas, which is the rumor mill, $5 million. How mm -hmm. much money is Cooper Rush getting right now? <laughs> the league minimum. Okay. 
I'm serious. What's Chase Daniels you think getting? Who's a very good <laughs> NFL backup quarterback? Arguably one of the greatest Texas high school quarterbacks ever in high school football. What's I'll, he making a I'll year? Look it up. You know, so you, you've got Quinn Years going to be making more money than probably half the backups in the NFL. Okay, what's your point here? My point is, is you're ruining college football. Is ah. what you're doing. You don't know that. Yes, it is. What's your alternative? Just keep them. Keep I don't them poor? understand. They're, they're not fucking poor. One Those million dollars, one year. Okay, there you go. Quinn Years <laughs> is making five times well, the amount of money. Chase Daniel should have done better. Yeah. Should have been playing at a different era. The thing that I don't like about all this is that they're not gonna um, give Reggie Bush's Heisman back. That's what I don't like. It's legal now. Anybody that got caught cheating back in the past, give them their accolades. They let, let them, everybody let them, of, let them should, ride off into the sunset. Should they let everybody out of prison that sold marijuana was illegal? Yes, hundred percent. Okay, absolutely. I don't see how the how the how I don't see how we move the goalpost, decriminalize something, but keep all the criminals locked up. That makes no sense to me. Especially if we're on the topic of that, jails are overrun anyway. So we're going to keep somebody in jail that sold a dime bag twenty years ago. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I can't really debate that because okay. I really don't have my conscience Check, I've got tells you, you that, that 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 point. Yes, I would agree with you on that. Um, for marijuana, cocaine, all that other shit. No, that's not legal. I, it's I understand still not that. legal. I, I was just clarifying my stance on that. But I think if if you if you erase a law and say this activity is now deemed legal, anybody that was put in jail, just like uh, if somebody was in jail for uh, bootlegging. Back in the twenties, fucking alcohol is legal. You shouldn't still be in jail for that. Yeah, bootlegging's different though, because those people weren't paying taxes on it and were selling it illegal. Marijuana and stuff. Those guys there are doing the same thing they're doing now. So you're telling me if there's a driver that got caught bootlegging liquor back in the twenties, well, they arrested him. No, no, no. Let's say he's alive. He's got fucking great genetics. He's a hundred <laughs> years old. He's having the time of his life. If he's he, having he's, the time of his life, probably he, don't want to get out. He's, you know, he's navigated the prison system. He's that old wily veteran that you talk to to ask, you know, they put you in cell with him. You're like, hey, how am I going to make it here? He tells you a couple things. Alcohol has been legal for 100 years now, correct? Maybe 99. This is a, I, I this is a horrible remember. argument on your end. Should he still be in jail? <laughs> no. He should have gotten out of jail 100 years ago. Okay. Um, what is Coke McCoy salary? Go down to that. People you also ask, it's a th third one right there. Yeah. I'm going to say probably pretty close to Chase Daniels around the million. $1 million. 1.215. 1 1.2. Okay. So I wonder what Colt McCoy's lifetime earnings are. Probably all pretty damn good. You think it's $100 million? No. You don't think so? You think he's been playing for 100 years? He's, he's had, he had a big contract. No. I would say maybe $25 million at the most. I'm going to say 78. Oh fuck no! You're not even close. Uh, fifteen million dollars. Fifteen million dollars. Seventy-eight, huh? Math is not your strong point. Yeah. I can't believe he's played twelve years in the NFL. That is fucking crazy. Fifteen million dollars. He's done well for himself. That's a great life. A great, great one percenter all the way. One of the richest NFL players. No, I would not. I would not do that. Don't. No, I wouldn't even cut on that. But anyways, he's made $15 million. The kid at Texas in three years is going to make more money than he made. Colt McCoy made nearly $2 million per touchdown in six years. Well, no, that's pretty good money <clears throat> per touchdown. My, I think I think college getting paid is ruining it. I think you're there's a college out there right now that's insignificant. That's, that's Yeah, Harvard. Got, that's got a, they're not insignificant. But there's a school out there right now that's got some Elon Musk as a alumni, alumnus that wants to be in the football game, and he can p come up with fifty to hundred million dollars a year. He can buy a football team, and then they can be relevant all of a sudden. God love them. It's capitalism. This is America. I just I, I think it's God love them. Th th those kids that play football, basketball, whatever it is. If you're a if you're a college football player, you've got a springboard on life. You get five years of free college, room and board. You get tons of publicity. You have a way to market yourself already. You got a free bump. They act like they don't have nothing. Well, but what about the third string center that don't amount to shit? Life? Exactly. He still has a springboard. In life. I don't. Think so. I you disagree. don't think so? No. Fuck. Bullshit. The third string center. If he played football at Texas Tech in Lubbock, the bench. Texas, he played football for. Rode the bench. Yes. He's got. A, he he has doors open for him. No. That the other. Yes, he does. Every fucking kid that played college sports has a door open for him that other kids don't have. They get paid. He got free school. He don't have a school loan. He got five years of free college. I don't think so. I don't think that they're on a full-ride scholarship if yes, you're a third-string center. 
Hey, when they signed him to a scholarship, they didn't know he was going to be a fucking third string quarterback at center. He might not even been on scholarship. God damn, Andy. Are they going to make these people pay their own school now? No, they should though. If you're on, if you're on scholarship and you get, you've got a free path in school. You got to, you got to beat, beat over everybody. You get better meals. You get travel. You get to go do things. It's an open door for you. Eighty percent of all student athletes receive some form of academic grant or need based scholarship. So twenty percent receive nothing. Okay, go to go go to NCAA Division One. Go go to them NCAA Division One football players. What the percentage of them that are on full scholarship? It's going to be a lot more than eighty percent. Percentage of Division One college athletes. Division One college football. I'm not talking about fucking badminton and shit. I'm talking football because there ain't nobody paying a badminton player. Well, they should, Jeff. Nobody gives what a shit. What if Elon Musk likes badminton? Well, then go ahead, but they don't bring any money. How many times badminton games have you watched? Uh, hell. See, that's not... That's, what percentage of college... What percent of only athletes? Only 2% of high school kids get a scholarship. Okay, that's not at all what I was looking for. The, the first one right there, right, right? This one? No, up. Up, 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 up one spot right there. No, down. Right there. Yep. That's athletes again, Jeff. I'm trying to find football players, like you told okay, me to that's find. Right. Okay, the third, third, the th- up, up, up two, right there. Oh, there we go. Uh, roughly ten thousand scholarship Division One football players out there. Yeah. T- okay, but there's ten thousand of those guys. They got a head start on life. Don't act like they're. they're I'm not saying that they're, they're slaves aren't. to the deal. And just and, and I'm going to talk about that too. Fucking Jamil Hill, that dumb bitch. She was arguing the other day that the fucking NFL is on is, is is like working slavery. Well, that's what Colin Kaepernick said in his. Uh, that's what the argument was about. Yeah. Was it him saying they, that? Because they have a combine and they measure you know measure your physical stats. Well, you know, I, Colin uh, Kaepernick. Did you know he was a four star, five star high school football player? No, I did not. Yeah, he but was. for somebody that says that this is a slave or you know this is the modern day slave trade, he sure has fucking fought tooth and nail to try to get back into this. He don't want back in. He got a big check from Nike. Nike's he's done a lot sellout. better. Not he done. He has done a lot better for himself not throwing a football than he would have ever yes. if he'd have if he'd have played to his natural end. He goes home every night, banging that Muslim chick he's married to. Muslim turned him to a piece of shit right there. <laughs> but Ben when, and Jerry's they got an ice cream after him. With uh, well, they're fucked him too. Don't I don't go there. But. But but he 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 goes home every night and he thanks the Lord that he buffaloed the the media into thinking he was some kind of victim because he was done playing football. And he's he has said repeatedly that I am physically ready when the NFL calls me. He said that six months ago, but now all of a sudden that Netflix has a camera in your face. This is this is uh, this is modern day slave trade. Yeah. Why the fuck are you trying to get back into this organization? Why are so, why are one point five million high school players? Working their ass off to try to get a p- play pro football, mm-hmm. and only two percent of them. Because I every can't believe Netflix them, did the fucking thing on them. That's just it's they're, stupid. They're a fucking liberal deal. The fucking well, Obamas. Well, Jeff, another Muslim. See there, Muslims running it all. Division one and Division two schools provide more than one three point six million dollars in athletic scholarship, it, but that's still all. If of you're getting to go to college on a free ride. I don't give a shit if you're playing badminton or whatever. You have an advantage over every other kids there. You work. You 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 do something for that university. But they're rewarding you by giving, going to school free. They act like the universities don't do nothing for them. That's what gets me all the time is, well, we're just making this university lots of money. You If you're playing football and you're a superstar, you probably are. But if you're on that football team and you don't ever play. And you're, you're getting, just on the football team. You're getting a free fucking ride. You get free meals. You get a free housing. You get to bang hot chicks all the time. Your life's pretty freaking good. You talk to fucking Oswald over there that's busting his ass working at fucking 7-Eleven doing Slurpees at midnight so he can get a fucking degree to be a damn science teacher. Who's got it, who's got it better? You know? Mm-hmm. The guy who's paying extraordinary. What's parking fees at Tech now? Probably $100 a year? Mm-hmm. So you can park six miles away from your class? I mean, um, I, I, I don't know. Have you seen a university yet that's gone filed bankruptcy yet? No. Fuck no, because they're over. They overcharge everybody else. But I think the football paying deal. I think the NIL. I think it's bad for football, and it's going to go down to the high school ranks before long. Because what well, law he has? Quinn Ewers is a- he left high school. It's right. going to be before long where kids are going to be able to participate in high school sports. Well, I think it already had. Well, that's what's going to happen with uh, um, 
the Manning kid? No. Uh, oh, fuck. Freedom of choice to go to whatever school you want. Whatever that's called. Let's say the Manning kid. What's his name? Uh, Arch. Arch. Let's say Arch come from a poor family. Mm-hmm. Now, he's in a family that money is not an option. It's not a problem at all. So if he wants to go to Harvard or he wants to go to Yale or he wants to go to Cal or New Mexico State military, wherever he wants to go to school, it doesn't matter. He could go to school anywhere he wanted to go. He's good enough football player. Everyone in them places is going to offer him scholarship. And he's going to have a big NIL because Papa John's Pizza probably is going to pay him $10 million a year to go to school somewhere. Yes. But if he was a poor kid, the highest bidder his family is going to get in on. Right. They and, still might already. Well, but I don't. I, I, that's a whole different situation because of who he is. I mean, it's not like he's Cam Newton's son. I mean, he's he's the Manning family. It's a whole different level of, of you know what I'm saying? Oh, I know. If yeah, Brett Favre's it. son was in that boat, he wouldn't be where the Manning kid is. It's a whole different level. Why, just because of the grandfather? It just the, the, And the two, bro, the two uncles were quarterbacks, two of the best ever. One of them's the biggest probably ex-football player with uh, endorsements anywhere. I mean, I just that's just a whole different level of football and, and endorsements and a name. So he's set for life regardless. You but think it, so? Yes. You think Arch Manning is? Yes. I don't think, you know, Arch Manning might be a bust. Who knows? He, odds are he will be. Odds, that's exactly. Just like the kid Quinn years ago goes to Texas. The odds Texas playing Tech. in the NFL. No, he's going to Texas. Texas Tech. He signed with Texas. It's not too late, Jeff. That he, one already, kid, he signed yesterday. The one kid went to Jackson State. That was the day of. He flipped. They've signed already. That kid's going to Jackson State now. He's not going to flip. Well, not too late, Jeff. Well, it's not. He could go to Tech because nowadays they got this stupid fucking transfer, transfer portal, portal, which is dumb as hell, too. Not for Spencer Rattler, it's not. It's the greatest thing ever. Depends He'll, on how you're looking at it. Do you think Spencer Rattler plays in the NFL ever? No. I don't either. No. <laughs> he he's, he he's, bet on himself, and it was a bad bet. <laughs> a little bit like Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. No, Kaepernick come out good because now Spencer's half black. Maybe he could play that card. Yeah. Colin, that, Ka- Colin Kaepernick. Pave the way. Spencer for, Rattler is the ugliest boy playing football in America. Fucked himself. <laughs> Horrible. I mean, <clears throat> when you look at it, the poor kid, God love him. He was going to be probably the number one he overall He would have been pick. the number one drafted. Definitely a top fiver. Yeah. And he shit the bed. Let's just say he would have got his leg broke. He'd have been better Opening off. Opening day. Of, but first game of the year broke his leg. He'd still be the first player picking in the draft this year. Much better off tearing an ACL. Yeah. Than doing what you did. Maybe he'll go to Texas Tech. Revive his career. I really thought that quarterback would go to the transfer portal and go with Dickhead out to USC. Lane, uh, not Lane Kiffin. Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley. Do you think Lincoln Riley owes his team an apology? No. You don't think so? No, fuck no. Why? You don't do kids that way. You recruit them to come play for you and stuff and just leave in the middle so of the night. So you're never allowed to to better your career? To leave in the middle of the night. He, he didn't leave in the middle of the night. He left the next day. He left in the middle of the night on the He left jet. the next day. He should have handled it. Was it was 7 a.m. He boarded the plane. You don't and he think left. He, he owed those kids to sit down no, and talk to him? Oh, fuck no. Yes, he does. Fuck no. Yes, he does. He's pulled a lot of the kids with him. How many kids are going to USC with him now? Uh, recruits, not the kids that he recruited to go to Oklahoma where he promised them to play for him. I think you owe the kids no. that. Why? Because that you, 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 you told these kids to come play with you. Sure. Leave, leave, leave downtown Chicago and come to Oklahoma and to right. Norman, Oklahoma and play football. I'm going to give me. you a leg up in Oklahoma. He gave him a leg up in Oklahoma. He honored I, his commitment. I'm not saying. They got free that, housing and free parking. I'm not saying he didn't have a right to leave job. Mm-hmm. He did. I'm just saying he should have handled it with his team better. We don't know what was said. Uh, from what I understand, he just left in the middle of the night and that was it. Well. One of his football players called him out on it, too. Ah. I think you owe your kids that much. He might have given it to them. I we don't, don't know. I don't think he did. What if that kid's just looking for clickbait? Maybe he's wanting to get sponsored by Barstool. Hey, I got a juicy story here. Pay me. You can't trust these college kids. Jeff, they're getting paid. <laughs> there shouldn't be any NCAA program getting in trouble now. If you I fuck know. up now and get in trouble, you're really screwed up. So should everybody that's been in trouble be be taken off trouble now from the NCAA? Who's still in trouble? Nobody's in trouble. Oh, there's some schools that are – there's some colleges out there that are on some kind of probation or something. And then they should be let off probation. Oklahoma State might be one of them. That's their basketball program. I every every the we the the handcuffs are off. Why do we even have an NCAA anymore? Well, we should just call it minor league football. I think that's what the uh, wasn't that what they were concerned about with uh, Oklahoma and Texas going to the SEC. <laughs> I bet Oklahoma's regretting that shit now. Not really. Well, not not when you look are. at the money. It's all about the money. So okay, I don't think here's Oklahoma's the deal. got that money. Here's the deal. 
do, 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 why do these teams have the right to just go to the SEC for more money, but players don't have a right to, to go to the to, highest bidder? They had to pet it. Do what? Oklahoma and Texas went to the SEC because it made more money financially. They're uh-huh. going to get more money to play. <coughs> They're going to get more money to play in the SEC than they win the Big Twelve. Okay, that's okay. That's all well and good. Right. So we can we can all of a sudden go to different conferences because it makes more money, but a kid can't go to another school that's going to pay more money. That's that's taboo for some reason in your world. Makes no sense to me. Well, I'm waiting for your art. What, what's that's the, the argument. So they shouldn't leave conferences? Fuck no, not so, for more money. We shouldn't be, we, these colleges shouldn't make any money in, in conferences. So should the border conference come back then? What's the border conference? That was the one with Arizona, Arizona State, New Mexico, Absolutely. Texas, and Utah. Absolutely. So Texas Tech should have never left the border conference. They should have never done it. To the Southwest Conference. They, they should have never done it. Okay. So what are, we going back, what are we going back to? 1930s, I think, 40s? Uh, what are we doing here? What, wherever they, you know, however the lines are drawn, Jeff. I mean, I don't understand what you're saying here. I, it doesn't make sense what you're saying. Jeff, most of my arguments, I just start talking and I try to find it about halfway through. <laughs> like, Oklahoma State and Texas Tech are better off now that Texas and Oklahoma are gone. That's the best thing happened to them. I'm because going to disagree. A school, Baylor won the Big 12 this year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next year, Baylor... He's got another chance to win the Big 12. It ain't going to be once in every six-year deal or whatever it takes or 10 years because Texas or Oklahoma, and mostly Oklahoma because Texas has been irrelevant basically the last decade, but one of them was going to ruin the party of one of the mother schools. Now one of the mother schools has a chance because they're playing at an even kill. Now you're going to bring in the SMU factor. Right. Because now a school like SMU that's got a huge, huge – alumni base of wealthy, wealthy people can go buy 10, 15 football players, and all of a sudden they're right in the middle of this shit now. Exactly. In the new Oklahoma. That's what I was trying to say. the new Alabama. That's exactly what I was yeah, trying to say. I don't say. think you were. But I don't but I'm glad you, I don't think they should be paying players to play college football. I don't think they should have endorsements for them. I think they should be the way it is. You can become a professional football player in your endorsements. I think this is going to run its course, and over five to ten years you'll see a lot of this will fall off because a lot of places are going to find out that – when you give a, when you give a twenty three year old kid millions of dollars, there's a lot of fuck ups. When Who you, was it that said that? There was a there was a player that said, oh. "Had you given me five million dollars a year, I'd have blown it on Natty Light and girls." Yeah. But when you're eight, my my point was, if you look at the NBA, who do who do they do draft kids right out of high school? The percentages of those kids drafted out of high school are bust. Most of them. I don't know. Well, uh, this will all play out. The, It'll you, all be fine. You look at the kids taken in the NBA as 18-year-olds, and most of them don't make it. Now, they're all rich, but that's a tough, tough, tough deal to give a kid that kind of money and expect that much out of him. Because kids blossom early. There's a lot of 18-year-old kids that are 25-year-old men already, physically. But by the time they're 19 or 20, everybody else is caught up to them. Mm-hmm. Age, age minimum hasn't limited NBA draft bust telling you just don't it's not very good it's not good for the sport but we're killing college athletics basketball's done the same thing these one and dones that's that 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 hasn't been good for the nba or the ncaa i don't think well i'm just glad that all these kids are going to get paid and be able to live out their dreams they'll have a leg up they're making these universities these greedy universities a lot of money and they should see a little bit of it well, I just wish I was a jewelry and bling salesman in some Boy, of these me places. me too. Because that's where all your money is going to be tied up at. Woo-wee. Um, you think Floyd Mayweather pisses some money off? You give an 18-year-old kid $5 million a year. Quinn, yours with that hair, he's going to be blowing some money, I feel like. We'll see how good Quinn yours is. I'm betting you in three years from now, Quinn yours is not at the University of Texas, and he's not in the NFL. Probably be at Texas Tech. Well, he still won't be going to the NFL probably. If he ain't gonna make it to Texas, you don't want him at Tech. Why? If he's if he's a bust, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he might be more tailored for the Texas Tech offense, that that air raid offense that we've made so so popular out in Lubbock. Jeff walks away whenever I start making sense. Quinn Ewers might be better suited for the air raid offense. You don't know this. Y'all don't have an air raid offense. Everybody uh, has that yeah, offense. Yeah, 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 There's Jeff. nothing it's made famous in Lubbock. Nothing. There's nothing about that offense in Tech that makes it, that's no different than anybody else's offense now. I'm not disagreeing with you that Mike Leach had a good thing going. Did you know the University of your your alma mater you still need, owes him money? You need to write him a fucking check. How much for? How much am I writing I, him a I check for? I think they owe him 1.7 million or something. 
He did that's ask him to bring a check to that bowl game. Are they playing one another? Yeah, they play. That's who Texas oh, really? played Mississippi State. Oh, that'll be a good game. And he asked them when they come to, ha- to at the coin flip, he'd appreciate they'd just bring his check there. How funny would that be if he, <laughs> if they did? I don't think they're going to. We'll see. Mike Leach, maybe Texas Tech will deliver me the check. But if he was fired, he says he feels he's still owed from the 2009 firing. If it was legit after 2009, his attorneys would have worked this out. Uh, fucking ads. Mm. Are you seeing a figure? Yeah, it was $12.7 million is what they offered him. I mean, five-year contract. He's still waiting for his check, but... Uh, Oh, he said that he should have received an $800,000 bonus. bonus. That's not that much, Mike. Come on, move on. Be the bigger man. That's a lot of dough. Not for him. Well, it is for me. You're not Mike Leach. No, not at all. He's a weird cat, though. He is a weird cat, and all these people that wanted, wanted Texas to hire, Tech to hire him back, it wouldn't be good for either one of them. Oh, he thinks he's owed $2.5 million. Huh. Oh, damn, they fired him after he went nine and four. Have they won nine games total since he left? Yeah. <laughs> We're in a fucking bowl. We're in a bowl. Spoiler. Yeah. I think that's the first bowl game y'all been into since he left, no, too. No, that's not at all. We were, we were in multiple bowls with uh, Pretty Boy. Huh? Rick Cliff Kingsbury. We were in all sorts of bowls with him. Uh, why don't you look up them records there, smart boy? I fucking will. Okay, look them up. I know. We, uh, his first year, his first year, we were the first – NCAA team to qualify for a bowl. Yeah, because y'all played Utah State, New it Mexico doesn't matter State how, for the blind. Jeff. Uh, Maybe Texas should take some of this. I'm not, I'm not defending Texas on anything when it comes to football anymore. A bunch of fucking entitled pu- soft pussies. Hmm. And I told a big alumni guy here the other day that I said it ain't going to change because them fucking kids are all fucking soft that go there because they, they think they got life made. List of the Texas Tech Bowl game. Okay. Uh okay. Uh, when was Cliff Kingsbury coach? Oh, right there. Three, right there. Two, three. No, he did three, three. No, that, yeah, not as many as Mike Leach. No. Ruffin McNeil. He played. That was Leach's last year. Remember? Yeah, he filled in. Oh wow! Look at Mike Leach. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in a row. Hmm. Yeah, that was a good move on y'all's part. I, Jeff, I'm not in the camp of, of, of getting rid of Mike Leach. You I liked, wasn't at all. You liked Cliff Clingsbury. I did. He's a horrible coach. Mike Dykes. And how, how many playoff games do you think he's going to win this year? Zero. <laughs> Zero. Me too. I think so too in football. Zero. I don't, their team's not set up for that shit. Nope. They're, they're set up to look good in September and October. Yeah. Which is what they do. Well, Kyler Murray's small. He gets dinged up. And then all of a sudden. Now DeAndre Hopkins is out for the rest of the regular season. Yeah. Not going to help anything. I tell you what's really funny, though, is to listen to the people in Pittsburgh try to shame James Conner and make excuses for him. They let a damn good running back go. Now, Najee Harris is really good, too. Yeah, he is. But you wouldn't have to use a first-round draft pick when you had a guy just as good sitting there. Running backs are a diamond dozen. There is no reason to have a fucking first-round draft pick on a running back. Look at Zeke Elliott, first-round draft pick. Are they better with him or Pollard? Pretty debatable, right? Pollard. Melvin Gordon. First round draft pick. Played San Diego was pretty good. Austin Eckler, Eckler was just as good. So they got rid of Melvin Gordon. He can't even start at Denver really. Now uh, Cliff Kingsbury's one and two in bowls. Well, I gotta go. We got people coming in. Check out. Thank y'all for listening to us. God bless y'all. We'll do a football pick 'em contest for this week, and y'all have a good weekend. Go check out all of our sponsors. Before you leave, check out the Looking Glass Duck Club podcast, Gun Dog Out Gadors, Goose Creek Retrievers, Bangtail Whiskey, Eyesight Drones, Stanfield Hunt Outfitters, Lucky Duck, Dirty Duck Coffee, Boss Shot Shells, Dive Bomb Industries, Pacific Calls, Chin Gear, Waiters, and State Plains Meats.